it's raining. So it's a good time to do something indoors. Um, and right now that's going to be tuning this piano, which I've already been doing, but I've realized halfway through that it might interest someone at some point online. So I'm going to uh, show you how I've been doing this and show you how I will do the rest of it. And maybe you can tune your own piano. So um, uh, the tuning pegs inside a piano are square and I know also that the tuning pegs on the drum are square. So I have attached this drum tuner to a adjustable wrench and that's given me enough torque to be able to um, adjust the tension in the strings because there's so much tension in the piano strings otherwise it, you just wouldn't be able to do it without you know one of the actual piano tuning tools so yeah uh, I'll show you what the piano looks like and how it sounds so here is the piano um, it's like seven octaves I think and if you look closely at these strings you can see that um, what I think is first octave are single strings, all really thick, um, super high tension, which is really hard to change. Um, then the next um, next octave, maybe, next octave and a half, are double string, two string on each note. Um, so these two for one string. And then the rest of the piano are all triple strings. Ooh, yeah, they're all triple strings. Um, I've gotten up to about here, um, it takes more. It takes more time the further up you get because of the triple strings. Um, but the tension gets lower, so it's easier to adjust them. You can hear the difference. Um, where am I? Yeah, I think that's where it ends. So if you listen to these notes, the two are pretty much very similar. Here's a chord that you can listen to in both registers, the tuned one and the not tuned one. Here's another one. Yeah, so not very tuned. <laughs> um, so yeah, I place this makeshift, makeshift tool on the relevant peg and um, listen to uh, one of the strings. I mute the two other strings um, on the same key uh, and listen to one of the strings, see where it is and tune it and then do the same with the other two strings and hopefully they all match up at the end and it sounds nice. Here is an example. Okay, I found the next key I need to tune. Here is the previous two. Yeah, so it's pretty out. Let's turn this tuner on and see what it can tell us. Okay, so this is supposed to be a G. So I'm going to mute the two strings on the right with my nail in between them both. You can see that on the tuner, that is like an F sharp. This is the actual F sharp, and this is the G. Okay, cool. So. Um, what is useful is that if I press this, this key whilst muting the other two, I can take this finger out and it still plays, so I can adjust it whilst this is still registering the note. Um, so I can see what it's doing. So let's go for it. Okay, once more. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Let's see. Yeah, it wants to kind of jump a little bit above, but that should be fine. Oh, what's the, what do they say? What's the saying? Um, not close, but no cigar. The other one. Good enough for government work. Yeah. I think that's the saying, anyway. So now I'm going to grab the two on the outside, like this. Kind of awkward, but used to it. See what that's saying. 
Oh wow, pretty much exactly the same. So if I play the, the two I've just tuned, they should sound good together? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Good enough for government work. That's what they say. I think that's what they say. Okay, last one. That's the mistake I always make. I forget to move the wrench to the next the next peg. So I've I've messed it up now. But at least you can see a mistake that I've been making so that you don't have to make the same mistake. Okay, so that needs to go down now. Um, the good thing about down tuning is that you can pretty much do it with your hand. It doesn't take too much effort. So you don't have to take the wrench off. But yeah. Drum tuner. So I want a G, please. Let's see what that gives us. Bit below. The further up you hold the wrench, the more slight tunings you can do, adjustments you can do. That's too high. Let's see what that says now. Okay, it's a good G. Now I'm going to take this off and move it to the next peg down. Great news. Last string. Put my fingernail between the left two strings to meet them both. This piano has been out of tune for so long that people have just been playing it and just sort of like grin, grin, grin and bearing it. Grin and bearing it. Um, when they didn't really have to. This is like not a hard job. I think a lot of tasks are put off under the guise of like not knowing what to do, but it's, it's really um, upheld by not even trying. Um, so hopefully I will continue to try and do things that I think I can't do during my life and succeed. Okay, so this is all three strings together. Probably going to be a bit thick, you know, a bit not completely in tune all together, but here it is. Yeah, that's okay. A bit honky tonk, but not too bad. Here's the, the last G I did. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad, I guess. Next one is G-sharp. Um, I will probably speed up the video now so I can fly through them. Here's a side note. If your arm starts hurting a lot, stop. Fun stops. Get stop when the fun stop. How's it here? The fun stops when the gambling. No. Stop when the fun stops. But really, don't get carpal tunnel or something, because there are some weird arm movements you're doing. You're putting all the strain on your wrists, the wrench and the pinching and the tapping and the yada yada. Yeah. Uh, take a break every couple of strings or something, you know, don't injure yourself. So I have a slight concern. It hasn't arisen yet, but I feel like this issue might arise pretty soon. So um, as you can see with the hammers down here, Good, good bit of space above the hammer where I can mute the strings with my fingers but as you go up here you can see the where the hammers hit where the dust isn't the gap gets way smaller so I've got a feeling when I'm you know tuning this string I'm gonna have to figure out a new way to mute the two strings I'm not tuning um, maybe I'll stick something under here we'll see I'll let you know So uh, here's one 
extra thing that I keep thinking about. Um, if you're having a tough time uh, tuning the lower strings, move past them um, and do the higher strings, because the higher strings are easier, not only because there's less tension, but because the way um, frequencies work uh, in the Western scale, I think, of all scales, is that um, it's not a linear uh, difference in um, numerical frequency between each semitone or each tone. Um, I think it goes up by a multiplication. I can't remember what the multiplication is. Maybe it's something to do with 12? I don't know. Um, but that means that each increment gets bigger. So at the top, you can, mo you can tune more. You can, you can make larger adjustments for smaller um, adjustments than the actual. You can make larger physical adjustments for smaller actual tonal adjustments, which is easier. Um, so if you're frustrated with the low strings, do the high strings and go back to them. It'll take longer. So yeah. OK, so I solved the issue of um, not being able to fit my fingers under there by using these two pencils, which I've been putting uh, in the gaps under the hammers. And um, uh, it's quite awkward to uh, get two pencils in. So what I've been doing is doing putting a pencil between the two outer strings and tuning the leftmost string and then putting the pencil between the two left strings and tuning the rightmost string and then playing the key cacophonically all together and then just adjusting the third one by ear and doing some fine tuning by um, quite awkwardly putting the two pencils on both outside strings. Um, so it's quite annoying, but manageable. But yeah, the piano is in tune right now. Here are the, here are the ones that aren't in tune. starts from there. Listen. Yeah, these seven. Hi, again. Um, piano's tuned, apart from the top seven keys. Um, and I wanted to make some sort of demonstration video of it being tuned. But I'm not a very good pianist. Um, but Lou and I were just uh, messing around on the piano and drums. And uh, I was also thinking about um, this workshop they did the other day called The Art of Makam, which is the, one of the Arab uh, templates of music to perform. Um, and uh, one of the principles the guy taught us in there um, was about how to, um, create a, how to create a motif, um, embellish it, or alter it, and then break it. And that sounds very makam y um, so I thought that uh, Lou and I could make a very simple demonstration of the piano being in tune and also that principle. Um, yes. Okay, so we're going to do two bars of creating the motif and then altering it and then I'll break it and you'll see it kind of sounds Arab or Kami, you know, you'll see. Surefire way. Something cool.